Hi. I have a little question for you all. Has anyone here ever built a platform solution? Maybe you want to. But have you built a platform solution that didn't really get the adoption that you would have expected it to get? Well, I have. And since we're among friends here, I thought I'd be honest, I've done it more than once. <laughs> so, uh, I um, had several solutions that didn't get the adoption that I'd expected them to get. I mean, who put the engineer in charge of marketing? What were they thinking? But in good news, I've also been responsible for solutions that were widely adopted, had great adoption, and some of them had amazing adoption despite the fact that everyone hated using it. Well, you know why? Thank you, leadership, for mandating adoption. This talk, though, is not about how we mandate adoption. It is about how we drive and inspire adoption by leveraging some not-so-secret marketing lessons that I've learned in my career. My name is Erica Huberg, and I look better in the photo than I do in real life. I, um, I have failed, as I said, at enabling platform solution adoption, adoption more than once. And to save you some time, to make sure you don't make the same mistakes I've made, I'm going to share three lessons with you today. And for context, though, I learned these lessons in quite large enterprises with hundreds to thousands of developers. And today, I work at Tetrate, a company that is focused on gateway solutions and service mesh solutions. But the best part about working at Tetrate, I get to spend a lot of time speaking to platform engineers and platform engineering leaders like yourself and talk about challenges. And actually, that's made me realize a lot of the challenges that I faced in my career. I'm not alone, which is really nice. Sometimes we need to feel a bit of empathy for what we've gone through in life. So when we build platform solutions, it seems obvious that everyone should just adopt them. Because it's a shared, common solution. I mean, when we use shared and common solutions, we save time. It's a no-brainer, common sense. But we build great technical solutions. And you know what? Nowadays, we all manage those platform solutions as products, because we learned that the hard way. But user adoption is hard. And especially if you're retrofitting a platform solution into a mature enterprise system. And, you know, leadership. They ask a lot of platform engineers. They ask us to have deep technical expertise, manage our solutions as products, understand and have empathy for all our stakeholders. We need to be technical writers, developer evangelists, and that's just to name a few. Multidisciplinary fields, you could call it. But in contrast, when we have external products, there are specific roles for these things. There are developer evangelists, there are marketers, and sometimes you're lucky enough and you get a dedicated technical writer. So it took me some time to realize that despite the fact I was managing my solutions as a product, something was missing. And one day, in frustration, pulling my hair out, still got a lot left, I sent a message to my manager. Do you want me to focus on marketing the solution, or do you want us to focus on building solutions? And with that, I had stumbled across the missing puzzle piece, marketing. So here are three lessons that have really been really important for me in my journey. And that is to build a movement, leverage the loyalty loop, and embrace value-based pricing. And you know what? I'm going to throw in a little extra fourth lesson for you in the end that I've actually learned quite recently. So what do we mean by building a movement? It's actually the best marketing advice I've ever gotten. So those who join the movement will evangelize your solution, 
your mission, your vision, all them buzzwords. Just look at this though, sometimes we get marketing a bit wrong. That's a bit uninspiring at best. You know what, that sounds quite controlling and off-putting to me, we're back in mandating things. This is getting better, we're getting a bit like end client focused here, so you know, we're aligning our goals a bit better. And this is getting even better. We're talking more about our clients and how the product teams and organizations can actually get there. But lastly, if you really want to build a movement, you've got to invite your users to be part of the journey, to define the future with you. So we are here together to enable our clients to do more. Let's discuss, learn, and define. So that's, you've got to get those people to be part of your movement. And inspiring people is hard. But I've got some good news though. You don't have to inspire everyone. You can start small. And you don't have to focus on convincing the naysayers. Focus on the ones that are already aligned with your vision. Invite them to further define the vision. Discuss the future with them. Start small and your movement will grow organically. And now when you've inspired people and we've invited them to explore We've invited them and initiated a sense of community. They're part of something bigger than themselves, and that is the loyalty loop. So now when we started building this loyalty loop, it means that we have created loyal customers that will keep coming back to us for more solutions. But to have people want to come back for your solutions, you actually have to make sure they have a good experience, though. So don't build something bad and horrible that everyone hates using. That would be a bad idea. So if it's really hard to adopt your solution, you're, not gonna, you're gonna break that loop, and it ain't the loop anymore. It's a dead end. So solve something, solve a real problem, and solve it well. Because don't try to take and solve all the problems with your platform straight away. And make your users successful. And they will evangelize your team, they will evangelize your solution, and they will keep coming back for more. It's really great in marketing when people start selling your product for you. And think about it. You've probably used the solution before from a company you really enjoyed, and it really worked for you. And when you were looking for another solution, you kept coming back to that company. And sometimes when we work internally, you have to think about your solutions like that. Think about your brand. But you see, these loyal customers, they don't have endless resources. And the currency they're buying your solution with, it's not dollars, and it's not krona. I'm from Sweden, by the way. The currency they're operating with and they're using is time. So that is when we have to think about value-based pricing. Because if you aren't operating under an adoption mandate, your internal customers are actually evaluating your solutions with a cost-value analysis. Because think about it, if the time it takes to adopt your solution takes a long time to save that time, get it back, you're not gonna do it. You have to understand what your break-even point is. For example, if the break-even point is three releases from now, that's a good purchase. But if the break-even point is 20 releases from now and you only release once a quarter, that ain't gonna work out very well. Don't buy that, that's a bad idea. So you see where I'm coming from. But, so you have to communicate the cost and value clearly. But don't tell people you're gonna save them time. That doesn't work. You've got to show them. Leverage your early adopters. Make use of their stories and their adoption and show people how your solution can actually help accelerate delivery and value and let your adopters share their stories and present it themselves. And lastly, I did say that I was gonna add an extra lesson for you all, which I have learned recently, as I said. Marketing takes time. 
It takes effort and continued communication and engagement with your users and audience. So don't stress. You're not doing a bad job. You're doing a hard job to drive platform adoption within your organization. Even the best products don't sell themselves. I'm Erica Huberg, and I work at Tetrate. I'm really grateful that you've been here and talked and spent some time with me here. I know you're probably really hungry, but if you enjoyed the talk, you can find me on social media. I'm on Blue Sky now. Anyone else on Blue Sky? That's really fun, right? I'm starting to understand how to use these things, but I'm more active on LinkedIn. Um, as I said, I work at Tetrate, so if you want to see me, come by the Tetrate booth, Q2. And um, lastly, I need to thank my mother for making me get a marketing certification in 2009. I never realized how helpful that certification was going to be in software engineering. Did not expect that. Thank you, everybody. Have a great lunch. <laughs>